Welcome back, everyone, to the 0K 3v3 Triple Tet Tournament. I'm your host, Dominic, or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer. We have gone on past the Swiss, effectively, into a double elimination. We don't have a bracket as far as I know yet, but we... You can see we have essentially a three-way tie between Firepluck, Spark Manu, and Goobers, or Drone Team. And we're deciding to do essentially a double elimination where... Winners is going to be between Team Fireblock and Team Spark from Manu. That's going to be on Titan Duel. And then we're going to have whoever loses that essentially in a loser's final against Drone's team, against Team you know, Goobers or Team FX, whatever. And then uh, Grand Finals between the two. I don't think we have a bracket for that yet, but I could be wrong. But at any rate, we're going to be moving on. Actually, I could make a bracket. I just. I'm busy casting, so no. Anyway, yeah, we're on Titan Duel. That is going to be Israel Fireblock FFC going in with Israel going in air. For FFC going for jump bots. Fireblock going for Clogi on Titan Duel of all things. On the other side, we have it looks like Manu going for air, like last time, and doing a lot of strategy discussion. Trying to get this thing, thing set up. Looks like the strategy discussion is taking a little while. But yeah, Fireplug is going to be going for Cloaky, which is the one thing I'm guessing is going to be our main source of damage. I mean, we might be seeing some Pyros coming out of FFC, but I'm guessing at the beginning we're going to see a lot of Glaives come up, use that to destroy. It looks like... Oh, no, never mind. I was saying Slice, Slice. No, Fireplug. Fireplug said I'd be going for Size. Farner getting Shields up, and not, where, not sure what Sparkles is planning on going to. I'm thinking we're probably going to see Sparkles going for something probably like vehicles. Like rovers, maybe. But I'm not sure. Anyway. See what happens. Sparkles. One wild card here. Looks like they're going to be going for rovers indeed. So we have one map, one factory I kind of expect in this map. And puppies coming out quite quickly out from... Okay, so that's an interesting choice. FSC going for the puppies. We have Fireplug going for the size, as was expected, because they were saying slice, slice, which implies puppies. I mean, sorry, implies size. But yeah, puppies, I mean, it's a cheap scouting unit. That's a good thing to have, especially when you are you have sides. Although it might be a bit of a dead giveaway. Nah, it won't be a dead giveaway. I was about to say, it might be a dead giveaway if if the if Team Spark from Manu happens to see that there are cloaky bots and doesn't see Glaives, they might think, oh, what's going on? But that's assuming that the air units actually get that far, which it looks like they won't. I don't really know they will. That's Spark from Manu's air. My bad. They actually will. They will see the jump bus. They will see the cloaky bus. They will see the cloaky factory not doing anything, which is really unusual because normally you'd have glaives coming out actually scouting, but no, they don't. So that might be a bit of a dead giveaway. I'm not sure if that's going to be scouted or spotted or whatever. Now, nah, like no one is actually prepared for it. We aren't seeing any outlaws, which is about the only thing I can think of that would actually work. I'm kind of curious whose commander they're going to go for first, though. I mean, the fencers uh, won't really stop the sides too easily. Will stop the puppies, no problem. Ah, uh, but Sparkles' commander has gone a bit too far forward. Uh, I'm not sure the sides will be able to do this 600 damage per second. No, not even going for it. Going around the back. Maybe they're going for Man of 12's commander or just trying to go for scouting. Bit of a careful thing there. But at the same time, we do have no other scouts coming up. We have a few puppies that have been built up, but not much else. At the same time, though, Team Spark from Manu coming in here with a lot of fencers and a lot of bandits, and not a lot of defenses to actually contend with for those units. Anyway, Sides coming in here, going for Manitou's commander. Manitou's commander under heavy fire, able to jump away. Defensers should be able to get rid of one of the sides, and the Swiss will help out too. Manitou's commander alone. I mean, actually, that's a huge part of the help here. But at the same time, that cloaking on that last scythe, allowing it to finish off Manitou's commander. So right off the bat, Manitou losing their commander. The scythes did their job. Good job, Fireplug. I worry they would have resigned had that not worked because, well, Fireplug has a bit of a reputation. Now at this point, the question is, what do you do now? <laughs> because at this point, the Southeast team, team Fireplug doesn't quite have as much going for them. They're going for more Reavers. Okay, so they're just going to go try to build some anti-raider defense. That's not a bad idea. There are raiders coming in, there's bandits and such that are being built up. So, I like the idea. Not sure how well it's going to work out. I mean, the puppies aren't managing to do much either. Bear in mind, you can't actually attack ground with puppies. I'm pretty sure they still will fly. There was a bit of a change to puppies. I'm pretty sure you can still use attack on the ground with puppies to just dance in the forward, dodging shots. It's a lot of really intense micro. 
but I'm pretty sure you can do it. If you put your mind to it and actually do it. But no, it looks like we're switching over from that to jacks. Which makes sense. Those get rid of fencers quite effectively. So yeah, go for the jacks and all that. However, I don't know how this is going to work. Like, this... This is not... Yeah, that Scythe Rush did what it was planning to do, but I agree with Drone. That Scythe Rush cost a lot compared to the actual damage dealt. This is not a 1v1. This is a 3v3. Or maybe 2v2 would work fine, too. But in a 3v3, there's still two other commanders on that side. And in a map like Titan Duel, when it comes to the, the protected expansion element of commanders, which is the really meaty, important part of commanders, well, they have two. That's all they need. And those two are doing a great job going for that forward expansion. Like, the middle expansion has been slowed down, has, has been mentioned, that's true. But I don't see a whole lot taking advantage of that. Like, Firepluck kind of taking advantage of that, sure. But 400 essentially is setting themselves up to easily come in and start just cutting off the center. I mean, between Sparkles and 400, they could just to get... Okay, if Sparkles is actually going forward and expanding, they would actually be able to just go from there, cut off the center, and then secure everything. Especially with Manitoul's Air Force, making sure that nothing can really move forward without having to pay at least some price in blood. And considering the amount of metal that was given, I, I agree with Jones' analysis completely here, because, yeah, the sides being lost means that, at this point, Team Spark from Manu has about twice as much metal as what... or has available to them twice as much metal as what Team Firepluck could possibly hope to get without reclaim. Or heavy raiding. Which, I mean, might happen. There are a lot of glaives coming here with the Pyros, and the Pyros will help a lot getting rid of those... Well, okay, it'll help getting rid of the pickets, sort of. The Glaze will just be destroyed by the Pickets, so it's a matter of when things come in, what timing. But yeah, at this point, Team Fireplug is locked in a corner right now. And that's kind of the problem, is that there's... There's nowhere to expand to, because of the fact that, yeah, one commander died. I think if Sparkles' commander was killed, it would have been a different story. I think if Sparkles lost their commander instead of Manu 12, then the northeast side would have been far easier to take now for Fireplug. And then from there, it would have been an easy win. Like, it not have been an easy win, but it would have been a split in half. Like, we would have destroyed Sparkle's commander, prevented the expansion over to the northeast. Manor 12 might have gone in to help out, but it still would have slowed down that expansion. And then it would have allowed for the map to be split in half. And then from there, we could have seen a more even game. But going from Manor 12's commander in the back like that, both meant that you were dealing with a commander that was not actively expanding forward. So not slowing down any expansions. And you were also dealing with a commander that was very well protected. Now, Sparkle's commander was not very well protected at the time. They had a few fencers, but those would have been easy to get rid of. So Sparkles' commander was an easy pick, was easy pickings. I don't know why Fireplug didn't go for that. It would have died easily, would have kept the size alive. The size might have still been able to get Manitoul's commander afterwards. And Sparkles' commander wouldn't have been able to expand over the northeast. Which would have slowed things down enough for the, the harassment to actually have, or the big raid, the cheese, to actually have done its job. Anyway, at this point, that gives Team Spark for Manu first place. They win, at least in the double elimination category. I can't really show it yet, but I don't want to show the lobby either. But yeah, so double elimination has been a win for them. Sorry, they're not first place. They're in the grand finals. It's not first place yet. It's double elimination. So grand finals is still up in the air. But at this point, it's a question of what is that going to be? Because now we have dr Team Drone against Team F Spark. Wait, no. Wait, what? Yeah, Fireplug and 400 should swap. What's going on here? Fireplug's still playing. Yeah, it should be FSC 400 Fireplug. Oh no, FSC is right, Fireplug. What am I saying? What? No. Okay, well, it looks like... Are we going to be playing Titan Duel again? Okay, I'm... Ugh. Unfortunately, because we didn't have Shaman here, Sartel's been doing a great job filling in as TO, but it, there's still a lot to deal with, and they unfortunately aren't in here right now.
This is annoying. Okay, good. All right, we got set up. Sorry about that. There was there was a bit of an issue with the overall approach, but yeah, we've got this sorted. I think we're going to be doing... Oh, we're doing Titan Duel, apparently. All right, so sorry about the slight awkwardness with the bracket at this point because of the fact that it is a little bit off. But yeah, bear in mind this bracket is from the Swiss tournament. We might have a double elimination bracket, possibly in time for the Grand Finals, which is coming up after this. But for now, we are into the lower bracket finals, still on Titan Duel. And it's going to be Goobers, that is Team Drone, versus Team Firepluck. Now, I'm not entirely sure what happens if Team Drone loses this. Because if they lose this, then I guess they're eliminated? Because they effectively started out in the lower bracket finals. So, yeah, it's a bit awkward. I guess it should have been through a tie, but, yeah, whatever. They already had lost against this team. So, in a sense, if Team Fireblock wins again, that's two wins for Team Fireblock against Team Drone. To my mind. But then, I don't know. It's it's weird. We're, it, we're kind of winging it right now, unfortunately. There wasn't really a plan for what to happen post-Swiss, because, for time reasons, it was going to be initially Swiss versus to single elimination, but then it just became pure Swiss. But then there wasn't a resolution because it was all in Shaman's head and they didn't write down what they were planning on doing in case this happened. This being a three-way tie. <clears throat> Alright, looks like we're going to have something similar to this. Much to that last game, rather. Where sides are being planned for Team Firepluck. So, yeah, that's a thing. Not sure where drone's going to come in. Okay, there we go. But I'm curious what's going to happen in response, because I mean, the last time we saw this, it was on Comet Catcher, and a lot of it came down to the fact that air wasn't played. Now, Malric has gone for air, but this is also a map where it's a lot easier to go for air because of the way the corners are built up. So I expect we're going to be seeing a much more even game than we saw in the Comet Catcher game. I mean, the Comet Catcher game was a bit even, but it more just kind of was a grind that at no point Team Fireplug had a disadvantage in. Now, this is going to be more even. Team Fireplug going for the size, probably not going for the same kind of push for the rating, Again, going for one of the edge commanders is fine. Like, that's the way this map gets played out. You have two commanders that go out on each side to take a side each. And then, as long as you just do the same thing yourself while having the sides go forward to help deal with one of the commanders, that's fine. Or, in this case, it looks like building a side primarily for scouting. Maybe a little bit of harassment in the back. But yeah, Firepluck playing it much more normal this time. They're not going for anything super crazy. They're just going for a scythe for scouting, going for some glaives afterwards for a bit of raiding, and not much else. On the other hand, Team Drone... I mean, they know that sides can happen. That's probably why Fireplay didn't go for it, because Drone was watching this. Like, they were commentating on this. <laughs> or they were commenting on this in the chat. So, yeah, they totally know. But at this point, with Drone, it's going to be... Like, they know that there are probably going to be sides, but there aren't going to be as many sides, because, I mean, they know there's going to be sides. So why would they worry about that? Not sure the sides can actually do anything, though. The scythe does have... I don't, no real risk of being decloaked, so it should be fine. Same time, though, the Kodachi going in here from Drone's side. And it looks like we'll be able to find a little bit of value. Might be able to get some of this done. At the same time, the Scythe managing to get it rid of a Metal Extractor does reveal itself. But hey, that's just one Metal Extractor. And from there, the Kodachi, however, unable to actually do any damage. Getting a bit of scouting in, but not really all that much. If you look at the actual things that were spotted, this stuff was spotted by Aryan's already. So not a whole lot of additional scouting information was gained. And a Kodachi was lost. 180 metal was thrown away, or donated, essentially. That's not too bad, though. Team Drone, they're ahead economically, or about the same economically, so really nothing really lost. But at the same time, it's kind of a question of what's going to happen here with any future rating. Because at this point, everything's kind of locked down. Looks like the two, two sides are going to be going in for a bit of a longer game. Neither side's really pushing too far forward. Neither side's really risking anything too much. Right, they're both playing it quite safe. However, Scythe is coming around the back, again, taking out another Metal Extractor. So yeah, good job here. I mean, this is exactly what needs to happen. Just get the Scythe in there, hit and run, get rid of some Metal Extractors here and there, just to make it that much harder to build up more Metal Extractors. At the same time, though, I'm not sure how well that's going to work 
in the end because drone right now our team drone right now they didn't manage to get rid of the scythe at some time cost but not at major cost but they're they're expanding a lot faster we aren't seeing anyone build over the northeast and that's something that could have been done like Israelite's commander could have gone over to the south fire commander could have gone over to the east i mean fc is going to the east so that works okay but i don't really know what Israelite's planning on doing now the commander back in the base and i don't see any real value on that and the commander could be going forward expanding in the center or could be just protecting stuff for the forward i don't know what Israelite's doing so I'm, I'm guessing they're primarily focused on setting up all these all these swifts here. I mean, if you look at their actual cursor, yeah, they're focused entirely on microing the swifts. They're not looking at the commander in the slightest, which kind of sucks. At the same time, we do have Fireplug coming in with a couple sides, dealing a bit of extra damage, getting rid of some Reavers, just, you know, damaging some of the army, making sure that there isn't as much that Jazz Cash can do. But that's about all that's really accomplished and at this point team drone is winning on expansions that's the key thing team drone has been expanding a lot faster they've been taking a lot of the center the sides haven't really been taken at the same time fc is just not building their commander over to the sides i don't know why these are not being taken ah, that's six metal per second right there if there was that to the two team firepluck team firepluck would be ahead I, I like to use the size though, and they are going to go Jazz Cash's commander, so that is actually going to prevent some expansion from Jazz Cash over to the southwest. That is a thing that needed to happen with the size the last game, so okay, that provides some hope for Team Firepluck right now, especially with that reclaim that'll be coming in immediately afterwards. So yeah, that's actually not a bad use of sites. That's actually a very effective use of sites. Get rid of that Lotus. Get rid of that Crasher. Ooh, no, no, never mind. Should have killed the Crasher first. Still, though, the expansion has been slowed. FFC has at least gotten a quill over to the northeast, so that will be completely taken care of sooner or later. I mean, the problem, of course, being the reclaim. Fireplug about to lose their... No! Never mind! The site's coming in... Okay, the site's coming in protecting against the Scorchers, but the Blitzes are still going to be a problem. Or at least in theory. But no, the Blitzes are being dissuaded from attacking as well. Between the sides and the Lotuses, the Blitzes are not able to actually do much. So yeah, that was a nice defense there by, Firepl by Fireplug's commander, but it may be in vain. The Welder coming in here, reclaiming the commander here for Jazz Cash, kind of defeats the purpose of having killed the commander. The reclaim is going all the way over to the Southeast team. I really would like to see that reclaim go over to, to Team Fireplug, but they're not going for it. So that's kind of their loss right now. Of course, that being said, Team Fireplug is not too far behind. It really is just the reclaim that's giving any advantage over to Team Drone, but every advantage is still something. Especially as Team Fireplug is only just now built up in the Northeast, and honestly, it's a little bit fragile. And the Halberd's coming in here doing what it can to basically just bait out attacks. I mean, it's dealing damage. It's going to go down too quickly to actually manage to do much. Same time, the sides once again getting back to work, getting rid of the Southern expansion that had been started up, but it is not going to continue. Is that a crane? That crane got... Is that a scythe that got rid of the crane? Seriously, that is amazing. I didn't realize scythe could hit that high. But yeah, at this point, Fireblock, they got their, the caretaker. They can start reclaiming. How much reclaim is in here? There is 840 metal of reclaim in here, so this will be fine. Team Fireblock's getting that reclaim going. Everything's sorted out. At the same time, Drone is being pushed back quite effectively. I mean, FFC, they've got the Northeast. It took a little while, but FFC's got the Northeast. Fireblock is slowly but surely taken, or at least restricting the taking of the southwest so right now this is going to be probably team fireblock's advantage kind of comes down to what this ray is going to do though because these blitzes are managing to get a little bit of revenge in here as are these scorchers the center is falling the sides are definitely intact but the center is falling and fmc is cut off okay the, it has been reestablished. the connection has been reestablished. it's not completely cut off but still there's the center thing that can be used to wedge out ffc so there's a lot of room tactically for Team Drone to have a lot to work with. And it looks like the primary issue right now is just that there isn't that push. I don't know if they're aware of that. Like, they should have radar coverage. Yeah, and they do have radar coverage enough that they know, hey, there's not much here. Go for it. But it hasn't really happened. And at the same time, air control is still being heavily controlled by Izzeride. Malric has a reasonably even number of, so of Swifts. It will be essentially down to Micro. But I'm not sure if it's going to, because at this point, the the Swiss coming in, I mean, it's 
Malarek Swifts are more spread out. That's the big thing to me. That's why I'm I'm hedging on this, because Izzeride, they tend to have their Swifts not nice and together, so they're just going to burst down anything, whereas Malarek Swifts are further apart, which is okay for a broader defense, but it doesn't really help if they're being attacked directly. Not to mention the Reavers coming in here, wiping out yet another Crane. Fireplux Commander under some damage by this Lotus, with the Lotus being distracted by the Commander, which is tanking the hell out of that Lotus. Well, the Reaver can just take care of it, no problem, and that is going to be the Reaver taking on the entire Southwest. The Southwest is done, and there, there's Israel coming in. Very smart, actually. I like that. Getting rid of a few Swifts from Malarik, and then boosting out of there to make sure they don't lose too much. And when things turn around, Malarik Swifts would have had a chance to counterattack. So yeah, at this point, Team Firepluck is doing a great job holding on a lot of metal. They do need more energy, that is true, but Patron's commander is under some heavy fire. And of course, Jazz Jazz Cash's commander was already destroyed, so the Southwest, very easy to expand to for the for the time being, at least for Team Firepluck. Drones Commander, if that gets taken out, that might be game, just for how much it will reduce the expansion a bit, the expansion potential. I'm not entirely sure. I mean, the defenses are pretty strong over there, so it's not going to be the easiest thing to break down. But yeah, if Drones Commander gets destroyed, there isn't an easy safe expansion opportunity over there, and already the Southwest has fallen. The Northeast is pretty secure for FFC, but a little bit questionable. And the Halberds are coming in here, trying to get rid of the Commander, but not able to get past anything else. The Fencers are stopping it, so at least some Fencers died, but it's not really enough. Those Halberds were successfully defended against. Mace coming in on top of that, but it's a little bit too late, honestly. It's a little bit too late. A few more Fencers coming in, however... Sorry, a few more Reavers coming in on the south to at least defend the south, making sure that's safe. So the real threat right now is FFC. And FFC is able to get rid of a few of the Fencers. This Mace is doing a quite decent job, actually. And going for the Commander, but not really able to deal any damage before it gets itself killed. And again, there's another Halberd coming around here, but more is just pushing back Drones Commander. I like that. It's doing a decent job, but it's doing a job at great cost. And at this point, the Reclaim Field's a thousand metals strong, and most of it is going over to Drone. In fact, all of it is going over to Drone. There is the Caretaker here, which could start taking it, but it's more worried about repairing FFC than it is about actually reclaiming anything. I really kind of wish I'd get a Reclaim Order. But I guess it's also useful for getting the Stingers up. Use those to get rid of some of the Ravagers, and that will work out reasonably well. Same time, though, Swift's over to the northeast, double-checking what's going on. Malric now seeing what they can do to raid. I mean, the Scorches are actually a bit of a threat here. This is like, this could be a problem. The northeast could fall. I mean, FFC, they are ex they are extended pretty far. Not quite overextended, but the difference between extended far and overextended right now is going to be very subtle and very minor and pretty much come down to whether or not FFC's base back here and defenses over here are managing to hold up. However, Drones Commander, again, surviving. Still, again, being pushed back. That is the key thing. Drones Commander is forced back as a result of all this. Now, FFC should be able to start... Rec I don't know if they start reclaiming sometime. I mean, I really... Okay, Team Fireplug does definitely have an economic advantage. It's not a big deal if they don't reclaim yet. But more economy is always good. Especially consider... Actually, no, they have better attrition, too. So, yeah, actually, no, this is working out all right. Okay, I'll, I'll take that back. It's, it's working out okay. F and Drones Commander going down to a swift assault. Took a long time, but it does finally go down after many, many assaults. And that is... That is a huge blow for the central expansion push. I don't know if it's going to be it. But I do think it's going to be enough to at least put on... Put on a real challenge for Team Drone. I think Team Drone... What will probably happen from here... They still have some money, but they lost a lot of reclaim. I think the only thing they really have from here is to try to maybe regain some air control. Maybe... I mean, they have their pillager out, so artillerying out some stuff isn't a bad idea. But, like, just try to go high attrition. But, unfortunately, they're not doing that. The Impaler's going to go down, too, so that's even worse for them. I mean, this is the thing, is that I've mentioned before that Drone, in particular, as a player, is a much more macro-focused player and tends to use units somewhat freely. Like, they tend not to worry so much about saving units. And now, granted, this is a team, not just Drone. But, I mean, if you look at units at value lost here... Jazz Cash actually had the highest value loss, but then Drone... Drone was kind of even with the pack, and then very quickly became second. And overall, yeah, Southeast lost a lot more. But... Yeah, it's just... Drone, as a, as a rule, tends to not be the most careful with their units. Like, they, they got more money. They're really good for the income, although it's hard to tell here. Like, the income was fairly good overall, and the metal use was really good for team... for the Goobers. But... It's just value, kill, value, lost. Value loss is always going to be higher for drone, and apparently also higher for teams drone is on. 
And that was a key thing. Although, to be fair, a lot of it was, again, the fact that those scythes were used properly this time. We saw the scythes used to get rid of commanders that were actually being used to expand to the sides. And that was being used as a way of opening things up for the commanders from Team Firepluck to actually do their job. And that was what made it work out. So yeah, much better, much more effective approach from Team Fireplug for the scythe use this game than the last game. This was this was how you use scythes. So yeah, that was that. We're going to be having the final grand finals, I think. I mean, Drone might argue with that. I don't know. <clears throat> what? Oh, oh whatever. Kalos does have the format, but meh. Okay, so... Oh, never mind. Okay, it looks like it's done. Oh, you actually finished. Okay, never mind. So, the tiebreakers have worked out. It wasn't quite what I expected, but it worked. So... Yeah, we are done, I suppose. So yeah, Spark Commander, congratulations, you got first place, Fire Team Fireplug got second place, and the Goobers got third place. Which drone is going to be very pissed off at, I'm sure. No, oh, they are very pissed off at, actually. It, it, their, their chat is saying that, yeah, they kind of regret it. So yeah, anyway. Thank you for doing that. Oh, also, thanks for Gantier for pointing out in the tw Twitch chat why the commander is in base for Air Factory, and that is to make it easier and faster to repair bombers and fighters as they return. That is a very good point. I hadn't thought of that. I still think for Team Fireplug in that case probably wasn't a bad idea to push forward, but yeah. It, it, made, it makes sense. I get it. Alright, so with that, I, I suppose that is going to be it. So, thank you all for watching. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for Stortail for basically jumping in at the last minute to be the guest TO. Like, Shaman had organized this, or Shaman, Shaman had organized this, but it looks like Shaman was not available. I don't know what happened. I hope they're okay, but they, they were doing fine before for organizing stuff. I don't know why they hadn't organized there, but whatever. Anyway, the, so with that, Sortail, thank you very much for filling in, and that is it. So thank you all for watching. Thank you, Shaman, even not here for organize, for initially organizing. Thank you, Sortail, for picking up this Slack as TO. Congratulations, Spark from Manifier, Black and Goober, for doing for your performance. Thank you all the teams for signing up. Really. Wouldn't have a tournament without as many people signing up. It was 30 people signing up, uh, 25 to 30 people somewhere in that range that signed up ultimately. So yeah. Thank you all for joining me, and until next time, have a good night, everyone.